Amen and praise the Lord. Welcome uh, everybody to another Thursday night edition of Perspective Matters Online Bible Study. I am your host, Pastor Philip Lowe, and it's so good to be with you as we continuing, uh, continue to marshal on with our series, Living with Purpose. Living with Purpose, we are now on week number 16, and we want to continue and end a particular and peculiar word concerning God's word on your potential. Part three tonight. It's three part series that we are going to complete tonight. Uh, God's word on your potential. Uh, God has got a word for us, and it is literally a mind blowing word concerning you. This is particular and peculiar concerning you. So um, if you need to, um, Get out uh, whatever you need to get out to clean your, your, your spiritual ears and open up, pry open your spiritual hearts to receive this heavy-duty word from the Lord. I mean, it's a heavy-duty word, too. I believe it's going to literally knock us um, right, right out of our seats wherever we are sitting tonight. Let's go before the, the Lord in prayer. The only way I know how to get anything started where God is involved is to involve him and ask for his, uh, his involvement. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father God, we come before you, Lord, on this Thursday night. Father, we come with reverence in our hearts and in our minds toward you. Oh, God, we have witnessed so much in these last 30 days Mm -hmm. uh, it is mind-numbing, Lord God, the things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, and the things that continue in our preview, oh God. Father, we just come to say thank you. Thank you for keeping and preserving us for yet another week that we would gather together, assemble together from all corners of this nation to hear from you, oh God. So we wait upon you. Lord God, you've got a word for us concerning us, particularly in this time, a time that has never been experienced before, but for which you have purposed this august body of believers to not only exist, but to live. Oh God, I pray that you would strengthen our resolve, oh God, to, to dig deep and to believe deep in the promises that you've promised us and what you have designed and ordained for us to accomplish by way of your Holy Spirit and your word in these perilous times. Father God, protect your gospel. Protect your gospel and kingdom bearers as we go forth into this world to proclaim your word amongst the enemies, Lord God, of faith, the enemies, Father, of your righteousness. Lord God, we ask for your sovereign protection, your help and empowerment. Now let your word go forth, uninhibited by any attack from the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we cover this time tonight, and we covet this time with you. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God, everybody. Praise God, praise God, and more are coming, more are coming. Welcome. Welcome tonight. All right, welcome tonight. Um, as we proceed in our study, Living with Purpose, uh, we are going to discuss today and bring a conclusion to God's word on your potential. God's word on your potential. What a word indeed. What a word indeed. God has a word concerning you tonight, and I need for you to listen and pay attention, pay attention, because it is literally a mind-blowing word. If you have your Bibles, and I know you are because I'm speaking to Bible scholars, I'm speaking to those who love God and love his word. If you have your Bibles, please open up to Psalm, Psalms 119, the longest psalm in the Bible, in all of recorded scripture. Psalm 119, we're going to begin at verse number 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. Now, my temptation uh, is and, and was to focus on this one particular verse, verse 89 itself, and we most certainly will. But you know what? As I read 
the context of this particular passage. I wanted to keep it in context. Mm -hmm. So I want to read not only that one single verse, but down to verse number 96. There's a reason for this. The way that Psalm 119 is constructed, it's constructed in, uh, musically we call it stanzas today. A stanza of music is, it, 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 it's like a paragraph, if you will. You know that a paragraph in literature represents a continuous thought, a continuous thought in a particular paragraph and just like a paragraph in literature a stanza in music oftentimes revolves around a particular thought if you will and um, God has a thought and I don't want to take the thought out of context because the thought is way too rich to leave to one verse alone so here we go beginning at verse 89 forever O Lord your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Now, some of you in your translations will have the word in place of forever, eternal, eternal, or eternally. But let's keep the context going. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Verse 90. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. By your appointment, they stand this day. For all things are your servants. Listen. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. Mm -hmm. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. My goodness, what, what a tremendous thought this is, that the forever, the eternal word of God is firm and it's fixed. It is firm and it's fixed. In other words, what God says stays. What God says stays, not for a little while, not for a season, but forever. Whatever God says sticks and stays. Whether you like it or not, it's not dependent upon how you feel about it. His word, once declared, it sticks and it stays. It is a forever word. I love this, how God bookends this thought in verse number 90, 96. I have seen a limit to all perfection. My goodness, the, the psalmist says, and this is David writing this. And David had seen quite a bit during his, his years, and he wrote this psalm in his latter years. And he says, I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. In other words, God's word concerning everything concerns everything. It is exceedingly broad, uh, meaning that uh, his word applies to you and everything concerning you it applies to. There are limits to what we see as perfection on this earth, but there are no boundaries to the broad scope of God's word. It touches everything and everyone and every possible situation you may ever find yourself in. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I want you to keep the broadness of God's word at the forefront of your mind as we plow through this particular uh, study tonight concerning God's word on your potential. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Well, here at Perspective Matters Ministries, we feed and foster a kingdom mindset to enable you to flourish in an ever-fluctuating world. Here, we look at Bible study as being tangible for today and preparatory for your tomorrow. When God has a word concerning your potential, he's, he's speaking a word that he's already 
but it is also in preparation for your potential to be manifested tomorrow. Right? That's what Bible study is for. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And we know that we know that we know. Living in these prophetic times, Bible study must be prophetic. It's a preparatory word for your coming days as well as for your present day. Amen? Now, living with purpose, this study that we've embarked on, the key to living a joyful and fulfilled life begins with the revelation and adherence to purpose. Don't let this become so familiar that you skip over the, the meaning and the emphasis of purpose. Because the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but it is indeed life without a purpose. Life without a purpose. The facts of life from the king's kingdom perspective reveals that the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but it is life without a purpose. Number two, the greatest challenge in life is not knowing what to do. And oh my, we are caught up in a time today where people just simply don't know what to do. That is the very definition of being perplexed. And isn't what the, the, the gospel writer Paul wrote uh, concerning the times that we may be perplexed, that we are, are perplexed, but we're not destroyed. But we're not destroyed. Uh, the greatest challenge in life is not knowing what to do, but we've got an app for that, and that is the Lord and his word that gives us instruction on what to do and when to do it. Number three, the greatest mistake in life is being busy but not effective. Uh, that cuts right to uh, the, the Bible's um, emphasis on we examining ourselves. Examine your lifestyle to make certain that your lifestyle isn't merely busy, but that is also effective, right? Now, number four, the greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. Now, there is no greater factor affecting your spiritual, emotional, physical, material, and relational life than living with purpose. Amen? That brings us to our study tonight, God's Word on Your Potential, Part 3. Let's go back to our opening text, Psalm 119.89. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. The, the Lord has determined that his word will stand forever. It's not going anywhere. Though the world will pass away, forever his word will stand Keeping that in mind, according to God's word, you have the potential to influence physical and spiritual matter. This is according to the word of God. Our session tonight is all about the confirmation and affirmation of God's word on your potential. You have the potential to influence physical and spiritual matter. This is what God says. This is what the Word says in Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19. <clears throat> Matthew 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So says Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Uh, this is a word that um, uh, we hear oftentimes spoken and used concerning uh, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, that we have authority and power given to us to bind and to loose. Now, Jesus is talking here about your power to influence what's on earth, listen, as well as what's in heaven. 
Now that's powerful. That's powerful. When, when the Lord first started speaking to me concerning this passage, uh, my, my, my attitude was, huh? <laughs> you said we have power to influence what's on earth as well as what's in heaven. I get the earth thing. Uh, you place earth into the hands of mankind. We are stewards of this planet, this sphere. But heaven, we influence what happens in heaven. That kind of blew my mind. And it still does. My, my mind still isn't settled on that issue. I got to get there. Pray for me. <laughs> and I'll pray for you. But this is what he says. We got to take God at his word. This is what he says. Okay. If you bind something on earth, it will be bound in heaven. <laughs> God did not mince his words. He, mean, he means exactly what he says. It may not settle well with us because it's like, wait a minute now, I, I, I'm having a hard enough time dealing with the power that God has given me to influence what's happening in my own life, in my own world, on my own earth, on my own terms. But now, God, you're telling me that I've got the power to influence not only what's on earth in its totality, but what's in heaven as well? Whoa. It, it almost, if it wasn't God saying it, I'd say you're, you're blaspheming the word of God. That would be the first <laughs> thing that I would think. But this is God saying this. God would not blaspheme himself. He speaks the truth. If you bind something on earth, it will be bound in heaven. That is a God promise. Now, you have influence in heaven, believe it or not. This is an important truth for us to know, who think that we are victims of the things that go on in this earth realm without our control or power or influence, that we're powerless against earthly powers, for example. That, that, that politicians and, and other policy makers uh, that, uh, uh, that have a higher pay grade than ours somehow will dictate the matters and the affairs that matter to us. God is saying no. Hold the phone. I have not called you to be passive in your life on, on this earth. I've called you to be active, and I need your activity. Ooh. We're not to sit silently by and just allow things to happen, just checking it off the list. Well, it must be the will of God. It happened that way. It just must be his will. It ain't necessarily so. You have influence in heaven as well as the earth. Likewise, if you lose something on earth, heaven has to do the same thing. Loose it. Why? Because God's word said so. This isn't Pastor Philip's word. This is God's word. I'm just saying what he said. Don't get mad at the messenger. This is his message. <laughs> you have the power to influence things in both realms of heaven and earth. I know, I know you're wrestling with this thing like I am. It gave me a headache today as I pondered this truth, and I still got a headache. And Pastor Phil don't get headaches. I really don't get headaches. But this one gave me a headache that, that's still throbbing in my, my head even right now as I deliver this word. You have the power to influence things in both realms of heaven and earth. My God, what an awesome thought. What an awesome thought. You see, you have the potential <laughs> to receive whatever you ask. Now, I, people mess up over this, this, this verse all the time. In, in Mark, uh, I do believe it's Mark chapter 23, no, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, that ask whatever you will and I will do it for you. And people jack that verse up in its interpretation all the time because they don't read the entire context. 
But this is what God says concerning you. You have the potential to receive whatever you ask. Whatever you ask. Or, or what uh, uh, my, my bishop, who, whose ministry I came up under, uh, Bishop Kenneth Omer, might say, uh, you have the potential to receive whatsoever you ask. He would have thrown maybe a little ebonic spin to it right here. But it is the God truth. Now, this is what he says concerning that in John 15, 7. If you have your Bibles open, I need for you to turn to it. John chapter 15, beginning at verse 7. Because there's some conditions associated to the whatever that we've got to get and understand. Jesus is teaching and he says, If, 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 if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask Whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Ah, this is a conditional promise. God says you have the potential to receive whatever you ask. Now, that's frightening when you really think about it. We oftentimes think about how this could be misused and misconstrued. That we would ask God for cars and planes and this and that and all kinds of things to satiate our fleshly wants and appetites. But God is saying, no, you missed the whole mark if that's what you're thinking. It's not so frightening when you put it in its proper context. Now, you have a blank check. Now, that, that, that by itself is, is, is kind of frightening as to what we might write. But there is one condition on the cashing of that check. Listen, you must abide in Christ, and his words must abide in you. You see, the blank check that, that Christ gives you is a check that he himself must write. Ah. He's giving you the pen but he's going to influence what you write on that blank check. It's got to be influenced by him and by his word. You just can't go writing willy-nilly on that blank check and expect stuff to just start popping off and showing up all of a sudden. You see, God is not a genie. You just, just rub your Bible and voila, whatever you want just kind of shows up miraculously at your feet. No. You must abide in Christ, and his words must abide in you. So the only words you know are the words that he himself has written. And we have it in our possession even right now. You've got your Bible open. Now, if that condition is met, you can ask anything in Jesus' name, and it will be done for you. Why? Because you're only asking what he himself wills and desires for you because you're asking according to his will. Why? Because his will will always take precedence where he abides. Mm. Right? So Jesus wants to knock the limits off your mind. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus wants to knock the limits off your mind, but first, he requires that you stay hooked up with God. There's a condition, but once you meet the conditions, there are no limits. Hello? That's a good one right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah. God wants to knock the limits off your mind, but he requires you to stay hooked up with God. Hmm. Then he says, as long as your hookup is in, is in order, then he says, go ahead and ask me for anything. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll give you the desires of your heart because they are the desires that I place there. Ah, that's what happens with the holy hookup with God. Even your desires that may have started out perverted are transformed into the holy desires that 
our holy God himself prescribes for you. What potential that is. What potential that represents. Go ahead, ask me for anything. I'll do whatever you ask. That's some serious potential right there. That's God's word on you. That's God's word for you. And what a serious word that is. Amen? What a serious word that is. Now, yeah. uh, God's word on your potential. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. God has not changed what he said concerning you. You have the potential, listen, to do greater works than Jesus did. All right, Pastor Phil, that's the last straw. I'm out of here. You crazy. You've lost your mind. Wait a minute. Don't go too fast. Don't go too fast. Flip over to John chapter 14, verse 12. I'm only saying what he said. I love the way that Jesus taught. And he teaches teachers the way that he himself was taught. Jesus said, I don't do anything that I don't see my father doing. I don't say anything my father, I don't hear my father say. That's why I come not in my authority but his. And everyone who teaches in the model of Christ teaches the same way. I'm only going to say what he said. I'm only going to do what he's done. And this is what Jesus said. Truly, truly. This is a double entendre on purpose. Jesus says, you best believe, you best believe, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do. Why? <laughs> Glad you asked. Because I am going to the Father. I'm going to the, I'm out of here. And I'm leaving you with the power and the authority to continue what I started. Uh, come, come, come with me. Put your finger in, in John, in the, the Gospel of John, verse, uh, chapter 14, and flip over to the back of your Bibles. Same writer, <coughs> John, we're going to move from John's Gospels to his first epistle. 1 John, chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, thank you Holy Spirit, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, if you have it, say amen. Amen. Y'all got it, all right, all right, all right, praise God. This is what John the gospel writer wrote in his epistles at an advanced age and time uh, to, to the church. To us today, this is what he says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. But here's what I want you to get. Here's the seminal passage within the passage. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Ah, if you've been following me at all on, face, on Facebook or my posts online, I've been referring to this particular passage an awful lot. Because that which the Son of God appeared to do, we must appear to do. In Amen. fact, that's why he gave us that responsibility to do. If he being our example, if we're to be imitators of Christ, then are we not to be destroying the works of the devil as he did? Ah. So when we see evil popping up and unrighteousness and injustice popping up, we are to address that just as he did. Now, what he did was he laid hands on the sick and they recovered. He cast out devils that cause problems. I do believe there's some devils we've been put here to cast out in this age. We're to call them out. If you can't get to them to cast them out, you can call them out. There's a devil right there. There's a devil up in there, and I'm calling him out. Now we need to get to the business of calling them out. 
Uh, you can call out a devil, but it's a whole other thing to get a devil to come out. But that's what we've been put here to do. So don't give me that nonsense that Christians are supposed to just shut up and live from day to day. That ain't living. We haven't been put here to be silent and ineffective. We've been placed here with the potential to be active participants in the salvation of the world as well as of ourselves. Uh, truly, truly, I say to you, <clears throat> whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I'm going to the Father. Ooh, this, this one here, this is a passage that I do believe should be mentioned, at least mentioned once in every gathering together of believers. We, we need a seminal reminder of what our purpose and potential is today. Otherwise, we're just playing church. A church that assembles and does nothing is a do-nothing church. And I heard somebody say that faith without works is dead. So, he says, whoever believes in me. Now, here's the challenge. How far do you and I go in our belief in him that we will do the works that he did? That's some serious belief. Now, now our faith is being challenged. Now our faith is being tried and tested. Y'all who were with me on Tuesday night. Right? And, and then he says, if that's not enough, then he finishes with this. And greater works than these will he do, will she do. And then he gives a reason for why you will do greater works than he did. Because... I'm out of here. I'm bouncing, y'all. I'm going back to the Father. So I'm leaving my ministry in your hands. As I appear to undo the works of the devil, y'all better start undoing the works of the devil. Mm. Jesus sees in you the potential to do greater things than he did. Jesus believes more in you than you believe in him. Because if we come back and we question what he says, where is our belief? This is what he says. My God, this is a challenge. This is the challenge of our lives. Because we're not here to be put to be idle. We're put here to work the works that Jesus did and even to do greater works than these. Not that it's on our mind to do, but God will put it on your mind to do when you're truly hooked up with him. Jesus sees in you the potential to do greater things than he did. If Jesus says you have that potential, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> to, to say that, he, that it's not is to call him a liar or to call yourself not really hooked up with him. Which is it? If Jesus says you have that potential, you've got it. It's in you. It's in there somewhere. Remember, whatever God says you can do, he won't ask you to do anything he hasn't already wired you to do. Mm. So we've got to reconcile our belief in what God says concerning ourselves. And when we come up and trip up on our limits and our limitations, we've got to remember that whatever God says I can do, I can do and there's no limits to it. So limits got to move. Mountains, you've got to go. Storms, you've got to cease because I've got potential that God says I will fulfill. I don't have enough money to do that. I don't have enough money to start a business. I don't have enough money to start a church. I don't have enough money to go and go here and go there and, and to uh, uh, be, be the missionary that God has put on my heart to be. 
God will take the limits right off of your life if you allow him to just on the basis of your belief. And belief starts by what you say. Even down to the littlest thing. I've heard people say, my asthma is acting up again. Oh, is your asthma? You, you calling it yours? Oh, my arthritis is acting up. My arthritis? Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the devil's arthritis. That's the devil's asthma. Don't you lay claim to what belongs to the devil. He wants you to have it, but you best reject it in the name of Jesus. My money doesn't extend that far. Well, you know what? Uh, then lose your money and pick up the keys of the storehouse of heaven because he, God has given you that. It's not about your money. God doesn't count in terms of money. He counts only in terms of your faith. He's not doing an account of what's in your bank account. He's doing an account of what's in your faith account. How much faith can God count on you to have? He will knock the limits off of your life based upon your faith. Mm. You see, God believes in you. What's really tripping me out here in this study is God believes in me more than I believe in him most of the time. And that is mind-blowing. That's where my headache comes in. God, you, you believe in me that much. And he says, yes, I've already put it in you. Now I've got to fix your mind right, get your mind right, so that you can believe in me every bit as much as I believe in you because I've put something in you. That's why he says, I I'm, I'm out to fix your mind. I'm, I'm out to reconcile your mind with mine. I've given you the mind of Christ. I need you to lose your mind so you can find me. God wants you out of your natural mind and into his supernatural mind. God believes in you. He knows the vastness of your potential. If he gives you an assignment, he's already given you the ability to fulfill what he asks, without question. It's not something you have to wait for. If he said to do it, get about the business of doing it. He anointed David as a child to become king. It took 16 years and a whole lot of running in and out of caves in the wilderness, being chased, having his life threatened by the one he was anointed to replace before he ever was able to grow into the actual throne that he was anointed to take. Ah. Some of us are have to grow into our assignments, but Lord knows, get into the, in, into the, the means of growing into your assignment. Do grow. You see, along with his demand, always comes the capability to meet that demand. God is not going to ever ask you to do anything that he hasn't already put in you to do. You see, we must remember, to release your potential, you must be related to your source. You must be connected to the one who gave you the potential in the first place. Because the potential was given for a specific assignment, and the assignment was given by your specific source. You got to stay connected to the source. Only as you are connected to God can you fulfill and maximize your true potential. We can't play games with this thing, y'all. That, that's why those who only tap in on Sunday and forget about God all during the rest of the week will never fulfill their full potential. There's no way. Can you really be the, the, the physical specimen that God created you to be if you ate a meal once a week? How emaciated would your physical body be if all you ate was one meal a week? Oh, I, I just eat on Sundays. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you only eat on Sundays. Look at you. Your skin and bones, you have no strength. You're dying. 
And isn't that the picture of the church today? It's full of people who are dying because they don't stay connected to the source of their nourishment. My God. Those who are healthy and those who are nutritionists out there recommend that you eat uh, uh, three or more meals a day. Uh, sometimes with, uh, as, as many as four or five little small meals. But you got to nibble to stay strong. Nibble on the word more than once a week. Nibble on it throughout the day so that your potential can be realized. To be charged, you must stay connected. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. To be charged, you must stay connected. Uh, most of us have cell phones. Most of us do. And unless that cell phone stays charged, you'll run out of power. Ah, it happens to us all. And oftentimes at the worst times, when you really need to make a call or get one, you find yourself out of power, low on power. So you go around that airport or wherever it is and try to find an outlet to get recharged. To be charged, you must stay connected. To have your potential charged so that you can become who God has demanded that you become, you must stay connected. You are master charged. Master charged. I remember back in the 70s when credit started to become all the rage and plastic came out. The first credit card was Bank America's master charge. Bank America. Master charge. I think it was about 1971 if I'm not mistaken. I was about 11 years old at the time. But I remember, because in my studies in finance, we studied this, and it's Master, uh, uh, Bank America MasterCard. Now it's called Bank of America, and it's no longer called Master Charge. It's just MasterCard. But you are Master Charged to be God's MasterCard on this earth. You're bearing his image and his likeness. Think about a credit card. A credit card is merely plastic. A bunch of chemicals related to petroleum, some dead dinosaurs and decayed uh, carbon products, including plants and other such things, that are taken out from under the earth in the form of petroleum. <coughs> it is unrefined and unusable in that particular unrefined state. But then it becomes refined into various products. God has taken you out of the earth, and he has master charged you. Uh, a, a, a credit card is nothing but a piece of plastic, but it represents something more. It represents access. You don't have to have, carry money with you. i tell you the truth. I haven't had a dollar in my pocket. I, I'm not kidding you. I haven't had a dollar in my pocket going on about three weeks. I don't need to carry cash when I've got plastic. Huh? So, plastic is, is rarely not, it's not going to be lost as easily as money. And you've got to really think about that plastic when you pull it out to use it. You're not just going to pull it out for just any old thing. You've got to sign. It's got to be charged and swiped. Um, you don't want to risk being rejected because there's not enough money in your account. So you're not going to just pull it out for any old thing. Guess what? God doesn't pull you out for any old thing. You're here master charged for a reason. But in order to, to realize your power, you need to stay connected so that you can access all of heaven that releases your potential. Otherwise, you're just a mere piece of plastic. But you are master charged. You see, religion will not release a thing. That's why religion doesn't work. Relationship will. Relationship, how you are related to the Lord, will release your potential. Religion will not release a thing. It'll bind you. It'll bind you up. But it will release nothing. Relationship will.
Relationship will release your potential. Your relationship with the Lord. Your belief in Him that should be growing and effervescent will provide the release of your potential. Won't you stay connected to Him? Won't you be resolved to deepen your connection and your connectivity? That will make your your power relevant in this time because it is directly related to your relationship, your belief in the Lord himself who is faithful to release the potential inside of you as long as he knows he can trust you with its awesome, awesome power. Will you use it just to collect things for your kingdom? Or can he trust you and release that power to accumulate souls for his kingdom? Ah, That is a challenge before us, my brothers and my sisters. In this hour, in this time, when all sometimes will seem lost, God is saying, stay connected. I've got more potential in you than you can ever realize in yourself. But I'm going to lose it nevertheless if you just stay connected to me and seek me out. I'll release your potential. How many of us are praying for the release of our potential? Uh, We're seeing others suffer with sickness and disease. We're seeing people uh, grappling with lack. But we have the potential within ourselves, in our connection to God, to solve the world's problems, to bring God's abundance to the world's lack, to bring Mm -hmm. his healing to the world's sickness and disease, to bring his peace to the world's upheaval and chaos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord, inform our prayer life, oh God, that we would pray for the release of our potential that we may be the people of your high calling, your possession consecrated and separated from this world that we might usher the world to your altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Religion won't do it. Only our relationship with the Lord will. Praise God. Remember, his word stands. It is a forever word. And that is his word concerning your potential tonight. Uh, If you would, join us every Tuesday night uh, for about an hour, beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, and 7 Pacific Time. For Mantle Matters, our weekly webinar series on faith and finances, where we have been engaged in a fascinating uh, study, exploring entrepreneurship from a kingdom perspective. And We will launch into week number 12 this coming Tuesday, God willing, as we will bring a close to the study that we've been engaged in. It will be part seven of the power of your inheritance, the power of your inheritance. Then every Wednesday morning, beginning bright and early or dark and early, depending on where you are in the country, 6 a.m. Eastern Time, 5 a.m. Central 4 a.m. Mountain Time and 3 a.m. Pacific Time. Join us online on the call for Perspective Matters Prayer Call where we have the privilege of fellowshipping together with the Holy Spirit in the power of agreement where we intercede on behalf of our nation, on behalf of a fallen world, and on behalf of one another. Then every Thursday night, right here, same time, same channel, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain Time, and 6 Pacific Time, Perspective Matters Online Bible Study. Uh, Next week, uh, week 16 in our continuing series, Living with Purpose, our topic next week, Say Yes to Jesus. Say Yes to Jesus. Sounds like an evangelistic word, but actually there's a whole lot more to this word than meets the eye. You want to tune in and get charged up, all right? Praise God. I don't believe anybody's mad but the devil. I am your host, Pastor Philip Lowe, founder of of, uh, Perspective Matters Ministries. We're based here 
in Las Vegas. Continue to pray for our city. Um, I, I've been hearing the testimonies of people all this week. Um, I've been involved in doing some grief counseling here, and the need is great. But one thing that encouraged my heart that I found really profound, there's been testimony of those who were survivors who ran from that field, some 22,000 people on that field, um, right on the Vegas Strip for that concert, and many took cover in a nearby church. My God. A nearby church right off the Vegas Strip. Isn't that something? Um, and, and that news hasn't really caught a whole lot of media attention. But it is as true as I'm speaking to you tonight. Uh, I do believe that that was Psalm 91 manifested. Mm -hmm. That we'll find refuge in the shadow of the Almighty. People ran out of a country music concert and right into a church to take cover from fire being rained down from above. Isn't that something? Well, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, stay connected with us as well. You can stay connected with us at PerspectiveMatters.org, PerspectiveMatters.org. And on this coming week, I'm going to have an announcement for you. Um, we're going to go back on um, uh, on on the uh, on Blog Talk Radio. We've, we're going to make an announcement uh, this coming week concerning um, a weekly show that uh, I intend to do. Um, along, <clears throat> along with one of our cohorts in ministry, and we're going to make an announcement of that this week. Um, uh, we're going to do a kind of a magazine show, if you will. We hear the news coming from the world's perspective, from the devil's point of view. We need a God perspective concerning the matters of life and things concerning life. So we're going to do a new show um, uh, that we're going to record probably on Wednesdays, and uh, you can listen to it at your leisure whenever, but it'll be an hour-long show that you can uh, uh, check out and, you, and uh, uh, check out anytime you want. But we will discuss more of that next week, so be looking out for that announcement. Amen. I love you in the Lord. Let's pray out. Father God, we thank you for this time together tonight, Lord God. We thank you for your word concerning our potential. Lord, in three parts, we've heard some dynamic things concerning ourselves that you have spoken in, in regard to us, oh God, what you've placed in us. Oh Lord, I pray that we would stay connected. Lord God, it is our sovereign prayer tonight. We touch and agree together, Lord God, whether uh, these are people who are, who are listening live as well as those who will join us via the video uh, at a later time on demand. We touch and agree together as a body of believers concerning our potential that you will release it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that the world will tremble when they see the sons and daughters of God revealed in this earth realm to carry forth your will and to bring your kingdom to this earth and to prepare for your soon coming. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you that you thought enough of us. You believe in us, oh, so much more than we believe in ourselves and even more than we believe in you. Oh, God, forgive us of our unbelief. We don't do the things that you did because merely we just don't, haven't believed that we could. But you have said that we can and that we will. And because you said it, we believe it too. Let it sink in, O oh God. Let us take chances. Let us go boldly in the directions that you give us. Give us your word to abide in. And I pray that we will be found abiding in it. That your desires for us will supersede our slim desires for ourselves. For your desires for us know no limits. For we know the the, the wonderful thing that you have proclaimed about us that no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered the imagination of man, the good things that God has prepared for those who love him. And if we love you, we'll obey you, including this word, that we will do the things that you did, O oh Jesus, when you walked this earth, and greater things than these we will do because you went back home to the Father and you left us here to clean up Ha, uh, to be the cleanup hitters after you hit that grand slam home run against the devil on Calvary. 
Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us regarding giving us everything we need to fulfill the potential that you have for us. May we indeed fulfill it and bring you great glory in so doing, in the name of Jesus. Now, if you don't know the Lord in the salvation of your sins, if you don't know him as your Savior, you can't possibly know remotely what your potential is, much less have any chance of hitting the mark. I want to ask you before your time runs out and you never know when it will that you would accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Make that the, the, uh, the goal of your being right now, right where you are. Drop everything and just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to the earth, surrendering your throne to wear a crown of thorns and go to the cross on my behalf. Thank you for dying for me that I will not have to die eternally. Thank you for being risen the third day to prove who you are, not a religious figure, but the Savior of the world. Lord, I believe that you died for me. I thank you and I ask you to come into my heart to live and dwell and remain as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. Send me your Holy Spirit that I may be empowered to live righteously before heaven and earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you're born again. Welcome to the family of faith. And welcome to the body of believers. We pray that you'll fellowship with us and certainly fellowship with a local church, a Bible-believing, faith-teaching church that uh, you can grow and be discipled. And we certainly invite you to join us in the discipling that we do in fellowship together online for uh, kingdom folks around the world. We thank you for taking God up on his offer of salvation. We thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done, for all that you will continue to do. Release our potential that you may be glorified on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you tonight, y'all. We'll see you on Tuesday night. God bless you.